this thing's happening. Yeah, we are. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. We, our Zoom meeting was interrupted by hackers and were able to take situation under control and we got them out. They were booted out. But these were the words of fraud. I can't breathe. I know it goes into our mind. The same thing happened on Staten Island, New York. A man selling his cigarette. Had the same situation. Eric, we want to say thank you so much for coming in and uh, welcome to this forum tonight. I know and uh, taking up your time, I know it's very late back home. Tell us how you're doing at your end. How's the family? Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, solo, uh, you know, when when you spoke the uh, your normal American language, that is when this thing pop up. So, you know, we are, <laughs> we are thinking that please don't speak your American language. The next time, because <laughs> you will get a bit of taste of it. Anyway, I am so much happy uh, to be on this program for the second time. The first, the first time I was here, we had Pastor Rabos and Pastor Kebby uh, presenting to us very much well. Um, regarding the situation that is currently taking up the social media around the world regarding George, is pathetic. Is um, is is a bad situation. Uh, I was asking myself, um, <clears throat> had this been the other way around to say a black, let's say a, a person of color doing this to the other side, I don't know how it was going to turn around. Why is true George in his, uh, from the background that we noticed, he was a rough guy. He had a rough upbringing, a very, very um, a bad record to some extent. But even at that, the way he died, it did, the way he was treated and died, it did not warrant that kind of situation. So for some of you that um, that are in that country and the way Ben said, you have to know your environment, whatever the case may be, but it's also good to, um, to look at it from the other end. George, may he so rest in peace, but he was a rough gentleman. You know, sometimes it would be at the at a point that you don't expect it to happen. I'm not trying to say that he, um, he, 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 he earned it, but he was a rough guy. Now back to, uh, to the point I'm going to escape that because it's horrible, it's something that you don't want to see. When I saw, if I, when I saw the actual picture of it, I saw two videos of it, I don't want to see it anymore. So I don't know if I can just escape that and just compliment Pastor Roberts that was talking about the agriculture sector. I would love to talk about that a little bit. Um, we are so grateful that uh, Pastor Robert in this country is taking uh, the mantle of leadership when it comes to agriculture. It is something that we all have to be challenged. You know, one thing I noticed, uh, frequently I have been visiting most of the African countries and with emphasis in, in Abidjan, in La Côte d'Ivoire. What I see in that country, every middle person, they have a farm. You know, we are good at talking these things. We all are guilty about it. We hail those that are in the, vein, in, the, in, the uh, in the front line doing it, but to take up the leadership role to say I will want to do it, even in my backyard, we are not doing this. You know, we all feel very guilty. I feel very guilty about it. We enjoy talking about it. We enjoy, you know, mentioning about other countries and whatever the case would be. But to take that one giant step, mm. that is a problem. In Ivory Coast. If a person is a professional person and this person have a job, a paid job, even if they're making $500, the first thing they will start thinking about is to have a farm. They don't need to necessarily live on the farm, but they can create that possibility and sponsor it. But here, our challenge is the mentality, the way we think about having a farm, having some agricultural project is like you, you have to be on the farm you have to live there you have to live there no it is changed now so i want to challenge all of us on this forum these are topics that when we when we discuss them we should not just discuss them because of theory we should discuss them with genuinely and follow 
the leaders and follow the pattern. So it's a challenge to all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ben, uh, Eric. And we appreciate your contribution tonight and also being here on this platform. It's not an easy thing to be here. We also want to say thank you to all those on the platform here tonight for this discussion. Hey, Joe, you got something coming up for June that you guys are doing as a virtual graduation. Do you care to give us some information on that? Yeah. Um, as, a, as a Christian organization, a media house, we, especially during this COVID-19 period, we sat down and we started thinking, what can we do to actually support our people, the young people that are graduating at this point? And just backtracking a little bit, you know that one of the things that I always ask myself, if Jesus was here today, what would Jesus do? Uh, and of course, that just just backtracking a little bit with what Brother Eric just said, and of course, we're in Bimba. I think Jesus would do some farming. And I think Jesus, I mean, in my case, as a media person, I usually challenge people. If Jesus was here today, we I go to his pool party. And I usually say he would be the best DJ ever. And the same question resonated very well during this time. If Jesus was here, COVID-19 today, what would he do? I think he would be strategizing as to how to effectively meet the needs of people. And that certainly, he will never forget about the young ones that are graduating from high school during this um, difficult time when all of the world leaders are reading from the same script, uh, social distancing and all of that. So we came together as a ministry and uh, we said that it would be nice to celebrate our seniors, uh, those that will be graduating from, from high school. So we, we put together something we call Praise Life, uh, honoring our se seniors worldwide. So on the 13th of, um, of, of June, we're gonna have this graduation ceremony, local time, that is Minnesota local time. It will be uh, 11 a.m. when the graduation ceremony will start. Uh, again, bringing young people, those that will be graduating via Zoom. I will be one of the hosts. I'm co-hosting with uh, a friend of mine called Charles Lather. So we're in, we're, we'll have um, some speakers that will be coming through. We have um, uh, some worship leaders, musicians as well, that will be part of the whole graduation ceremony. So we're encouraging people from all over, not only the US, anywhere in the world, that those that are graduating this year because of the COVID-19, you can walk through the ad during this time. We have a way to celebrate those people. Um, and the email address, uh, if people wanna contact me and you know someone that wanna be a part of that, is joseph at praise live. Um, dot org so yeah and we're very honored to to celebrate your daughter alex thank, thank you so thank you so much joe i think we appreciate it and just to say on this platform joe is running a radio station in liberia in marshall and he has offered that once COVID is over and all is set at the end they have some installation panels i installed this program could be coming live to you in liberia on an fm radio station we want to publicly say that and we want to applaud you for your offer. He's always willing to make all recommendation and contribution on this platform. Thank you, Joe. And uh, let me go back to Pastor Howard. Pastor Howard, I never see you preach on Facebook, but uh, COVID-19 forced you on social media. How is your experience, Pastor Howard? Unmute. You need to unmute yourself, Pastor. Good. I say I never see you come on Facebook before COVID-19 to preach, to proclaim the world, but this COVID-19, everybody is on social media. How is the experience? How's the challenges? 
can hear faster. Then you can hear. Can hear you, Pastor. Oh, yeah. He's speaking, but I can't hear him either. It could be something. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. We can see the movement of your lips. We cannot hear you. We can hear you, Pastor. I think we need to come back to Pastor Howell. Let me go back over to Lever. Lever. Again, we want to like uh, register our apologies to those that are following us. Some of them are reconnecting. Some of them, we've lost them. Uh, this is usual. This is an open, open mark. Um, we are sorry for that disruption and for those vocabularies that were used on our platform. We want to correct that. We already started doing that. But uh, equally so, I know it is disheartening um, to talk about that, but it needs to be talked about. And that's why I love the Bible. There's everything in the Bible. Everything. You got discipline in the Bible. The Bible says the good things. The Bible tells you when you sin, the wages of sin is there. Everything in the Bible. So sometimes when we when we see some things and say, oh, we are people of God, and we shouldn't be talking about those things. I think for me, uh, there are certain things that need to be talked about. And we as uh, leaders that God has placed in uh, that position, we need to be concerned that our people depend on us and uh, we ought to rebuke what needs to be rebuked. Um, it is a sad thing for the entire world. Uh, I think it's a sad thing for the entire world for the world to continuously witness, you know, the ill treatment of uh, people with color. I think that's a bad thing. And uh, I monitor the, the New York State uh, governor today, and he listed about 10 different uh, scenarios, you know, 10 cases where uh, people of color where murder in cold blood. I think there's a time that America stands to what, you know, it stands for. Uh, I often listen to them talking about justice, talking about human rights in terror countries and other countries. Uh, so if you're speaking about human rights in places like Libya, we not you're speaking about human rights in places like Liberia or in other, in other countries, you should be leading it. You should be, you know, or leading that race, it should be ahead, it should be practicalizing that. Some of these things that we've seen uh, are things that we read about in the early statistics during the uh, uh, Martin Luther King um, dispensation. And we don't think in this modern dispensation that we all find ourselves in, where we can sit on the on the table and dialogue where we can, you know, look at things in a very different form. You know, to have these things happening, our children are seeing them, and, and people are constantly seeing how blacks are being brutalized or people of color. I think that's a very wrong thing. I think the, the country, the government, the leadership needs to talk about it. Congress needs to talk about this uh, a lot and see how best we can put a checkpoint to these kind of things, because it makes the place insecure for everyone. We might not want to talk about it, but it makes the place insecure for everyone. When you're going out there, you are, you are thinking, well, our life is in the hands of God, like uh, 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 our senior brother, Brother Joseph, can be said, we look up to God, we believe in God for protection. But equally so, these things that are happening, they are things to, 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 to create panic among the citizenry, especially that identical uh, 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 people that are being affected by the kind of things. So we are challenging our government to take siege of the matter. And we have to try to avoid this thing being repetitive because it repeats itself every now and then. It's happening over and over and again. And whenever these things happen and you 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 pray for one next and you're speaking about one next, what it does is that it brings back the better reflection of those days. And then the, the animosity continues. Okay, so I think our leaders, our national leaders need to 
of stand the ground and, and put a checkpoint to these things because they are not good for the, you know, for, for, for saying, they are not good for witnessing. They are not just good. They are not just good for this dispensation. So um, that's my take on it. I can't lie to Pastor I mean, uh, giving a little contribution to it. That's my take on it. Uh, but my, my basic point here is that uh, back to the agriculture, shortly before I, I can I can go back, is agriculture. You know, the the issue of growing food to sustain ourselves is very, very important. I was listening to the Ghanaian president and he 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 spoke against this idea of scratching your hands for people to help you always. And I think that 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 that, that a scenario, that that whole picture, Africa has been affected by it so greatly, especially Liberia, our country. So it's about time that we rethink. Everybody used to have a little garden. What has happened to that 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 thought, that idea? You know, the moment the war took place and they started to bring that war food program, something bringing the relief and giving people free food here, yeah, and then nobody wants to go to the farm again. Nobody wants to do anything. So we all need to contribute. We all need to contribute, no matter where you are. The only way, you know, sometimes we say national government is a good thing, okay, for national government to prioritize those sectors. But we ourselves, our very people that are back home, like our senior brother say, in Foya Lofa County, we say Lofa is the bread basket for the nation. Lofa, Nima, Brom, we rely on them for, 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 for Liberia to be fed. But now, if people in Lofa County, from Jama or Paka, or wherever it is, way down there in the village, buying rice. What what kind of a, what kind of a, a, a election are we giving to the younger generation? So I think we need to revisit uh, how we were brought up. We need to reintroduce those things in our curriculum. We need to start teaching practical agriculture. Because back in the days, you would go on the agriculture teacher farm, he had farm, where you would literally apply your agricultural skills. But these things are not happening. They are not happening. In fact, when you tell somebody, say, go do this one, they say, it be human right or abuse of labor or whatever. So I think we have to revisit those things to regain our dignity as Africa. Because Africa means we sustain ourselves. Africa means we can stay and use this source and something good can come from all of us. Thank you very much. And back to you, Brother Fasa. Thank you so much, Levi. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know it's not easy. and. Gentlemen, we just want to keep you here for less than maybe we got 15 minutes to go. I know it's later at your end. But I want to come back to Pastor Howell. Pastor Howell, can you hear us now? I hope you'll be able to comment on this. Pastor Howell, um, I learned of a story of an African in Africa where an uncle sexually abused a 15 years old niece and was impregnated. What is your view on child abuse? Oh my God. Pastor, we can't. Uh, I think his phone is. Yeah, the sound. He, he does... Yeah, we can't get you. Eric, can you have a take on that? What is your view on child abuse? Well, uh, Professor. Professor <laughs> Ambassador Fasa, um, to be honest, it is a sad moment for all of us. Uh, I think this is the first time that it reached home, when I say home, in the mm. four-year area for it to be at this level. Um, it is sad. You know, what, what makes it more bad in this place is that when these things happen, we have a lot of advocates around town. We have the women in action. You got a lot of civil society groups. They will, they will protest. They will take up the, the situation, but at some point being biased. You know, with the level that this thing took place, I expected that the, the tension in FOIA in terms of women group, youth group, talking about this, but no one, if it was an issue of politics, Oh. Now, this is so disappointing. Why you expect the people to speak out, to make their voices to be heard, 
they literally let it go and just focus on one side of the coin. So I, 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 I'm telling you, it's a, it's a bad week for all of us. Um, I, I know that investigation is ongoing and uh, stakeholders are even discussing, you know, some of us are even challenging the lawmakers that they should not play politics with this if they mean for all of them to to um, to work together to make sure that this this uh, situation is followed to the letter, so that it will not be repeated. Because this, like I said, this is the first of a kind for it to hit us back home at this level. So when it is not seriously taken, the possibility for it to be repeated is there. I know, I know. That's very sad. I can't enjoy you coming. I know that is in Africa, but in America, if you are caught in child abuse, you're going to go to jail for a very long time. That I know. Not just sexually abusing a child and pregnant in her, but just maybe she passed in you what the African men can do and knock the gear butt. Just mistakenly doing that, you get into serious mess. Yeah, Joe, make, make your impulse. You know, when, when you said that is an open mic, I actually wrote it down on my paper here to see whether we could talk about this issue. Um, like what Eric said, it, it, it dawned on me, and I called my brother Solomon in Togo, and I, I said to him, I said, look, so look, um, this is home. How can, and, and for me, I said to him that I'm, I'm worried for the little girl because Exposing this, number one, what should have happened is remove her immediately from there. Now, I'm not sure whether it's true that this happened, but I read something that the child was flogged by a family member severely. So I told Solomon, I said, look, it's late now, but I wanted to call my mom and, and find out from other people whether they know the girl that this child, we will adapt her into our, our family and kind of care for her because what will happen is, yes, we know all of the abuses, but she will suffer more abuse if care is not taken. Psychological, I mean, it will get to her deeply and, and, and she need to leave that in, environment completely. And, and for being in the media sometimes, what we don't think uh, uh, media people is that we just want to bring the story out. But what are the repercussions? What will happen to the child afterwards? And that's what happened. After the story broke out, everything, everyone putting out the resources and talking about it on, on social media, but we forgot that this is a child that is still living in the home of family members and and i think it is it is bestowed upon each one of us to to look down in to look in our families where our friends are whoever and and start looking for signs of abuse where can we address these things effectively you know, and, and honestly, um, talking is one thing, but action is another thing. I'm, I will say it again on this platform. If anyone know that child, where she is and her family, we will want to help. But I don't want to join the, the bandwagon where in some group will say, okay, we're looking for funding, cash app and all of that, no the child needs to directly benefit. She's, she's affected. And, and it's not only giving the hand out, but how do you work with that child to, to, to take her from that point that she's at and bringing her back again to be a child? Thank you, you know? Joe. Thank you, Joe. Uh, we just want to let you know that this is Family Connection International. Today we're going for one and a half hour because we've got a lot of people on the panel having a discussion. I know we should have less than 10 minutes or so to go. And as people always say, they say the perpetrator of abuse is always someone very close to the family. That's what I said, because you have to be very close to the family to abuse a child. Because a stranger cannot do it. It has to be someone who is very close to them. Uh, Liva, what's your take on this issue? 
Okay. Like we said, uh, today is an open mark, and we try our Pax Overbex to not get into politics. But uh, I don't know the law on the books for those things. The law, if there are laws that are on the books for those kind of uh, atrocities, then uh, the laws are not being enforced. You see, the only reason why a member want to steal if he stole in the past and nothing happened to him, or if he sees other people stealing and nothing happening to them. For a man to rape a 14 years old girl, I listened to the girl, it's so pathetic. I think she was age 14 when she was raped. And then the mother of that girl is sitting over there. And like uh, our brother Gabby said, they even went and had insult to injury by beating this girl. That's a gross violation against her right. And they should not be taken lightly. Uh, I like the way Brother Ire put it. Our people, they, 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 they have immense appetite for politics. The appetite for politics in our country is so much to the extent that even our little brothers and sisters, our people that are coming up today, they don't even want to do anything besides being politicians. Some of them will beg for transportation to go to us. Uh, uh, the Atayi Center, wherever it is, Kiri School or what, just to sit down and partake in politics. So that's one of the causes for, for which, you know, agriculture is not even booming. Because the youth minds are corrupt. Okay? So I think uh, we ought, to, we ought to, to be serious when it comes to the law. That country is becoming a lawless country. That people would do these kind of things and go free. I can remember we had several cases like that. We had the late Angel Topa that was murdered in cold blood. Today it has been history. And we don't hear about those things. We hear about one Seku Kamara that was killed in cold blood. Today, all of those things have gone silent. I think we, 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 we ought to talk about these things sometimes because it's about family. You know, there is no way sometimes we can absolutely, you know, separate family from society and from politics. They're, they're, they're going to be a little link. I think our, our leaders need to stand their ground and whoever did this, she, we we pray for his his soul, but she 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 regret it. Yeah, we pray for his soul, but he should regret the situation. And uh, this about time the government step in, the general ministry step in, and uh, take care of that guy because she's traumatized. You know, it's not a small thing. I just imagine what she's going through in that kind of a country. You get a fourteen years old girl that. That is carrying a baby in far from from page africa we're carrying a life and you see her breastfeeding the baby you you see you see the baby looks like somebody that is very very hungry and the girl herself she looked like somebody that is very very hungry I, I think the government needs to do the government has to take siege of this matter and all of the those human rights and, and children rights and and women rights you know agencies that are in liberia this is about time that they talk about and even the church that is an abomination. The religious community needs to talk about it. The council of churches needs to talk about it. And our people need to amplify their voices to ensure that justice is served. Because justice is very important for a civilized society and to have stability. Thank you very much, Brother Faxa. Back to you. Uh uh, thank you so much. This is Family Connection International Forum. Keeping in touch, we're almost setting up. I don't know whether we stay be able to get Pastor Howell. Pastor Howell, can you? And okay, Pastor Howell, we'll have to reschedule this to bring you up on our platform as a guest. But I just like to go around to our guests. This is a yes or no question, gentlemen. What would be your reaction if your child came to you and say, "Mom or Dad"? Let's say that. 
I'm gay or I'm lesbian. So, will you accept them? Yes or no? Yes. Eric, will you accept them? No. Uh, uh, Viva, will you accept them? Uh, no. 150% no. Okay, gentlemen, we want to go back to uh, Eric and Joe to wrap up, gentlemen. I know that was a, that's another topic for another day. I just want to, I just thought that would bring a teaser. To, at least we'll get people to for a buttress, but at least let us take it home as 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 quite a trusting a topic. Oh, okay, I know okay. that. I know Ben Ben yeah, Ben been away for some time, but I know he's been monitoring. What will you what would be your reaction if your son come to yes, you and I say, know. Dad and Dad, I feel this body I'm in is not my real body. And I'm gay. Will you accept your son, Ben? Yes or no? Well, I wouldn't say yes. Yes or no? Yes or no question? It's a yes or no question. Will you accept him? It can't be a yes or a no. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Everybody had an opportunity to say a yes or a no. This is a yes or no question. We're not. We're not. We're not going to justify. Eventually, we can have this for another day. But will you accept your son? Have a conversation to come out with a yes or no on that. All right, Ben. Okay. Yes or no question. Okay, Ben. Ben, no. thank you. Ben is not prepared to answer our question. I know we have to go around and just yeah. wrap, wrap up. Wrap up. I must be genuine with you and tell you exactly how I feel. I, I want to know what is your position also. also. What, what will have, you do? We have a conversation, and, and from the conversation, we can narrow it down to a yes or no, but it's not just going to come and say yes or no. No, 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 no. It's not. Solo, what is, what is Solo's what what solo solo position? What is Solo's on that? I know we'll have a discussion. I know that Eric is concerned to know what will be my position. Yes. Certainly, yes, I will. And I will support them. Uh, what is your parting comment, Eric? Maybe there's something you would like to discuss tonight that we did not ask you. Yeah, uh, I basically, I think um, I am now in a, in a new role when it comes to leadership development. And I think uh, Ben uh, will talk a little bit about that in the short distant future. It's a topic that um, we are dealing with a <clears throat> lot of lot of topics here, ranging from attitude. Because all of these things that you discussed in social media, I want to say that yes, you got yes. We can make that yes to be a no. When we discuss attitude, when we discuss personal growth, when we discuss integrity, when we discuss society, and we discuss culture and your environment. So um, I want to say thank you. This forum is a very important one. And uh, I, I don't know how we can all, sometimes I see the message coming. I don't know. Uh, I think we all supposed to now send it to our, our, our contacts so that we can have more people tuning in to benefit from this. This is very unique. Thank you. It's improving. The first time it was not like this, so I know that you are doing a, a good job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Joe, your part in common? Well, um, let me say thank you guys for doing this appreciate you uh let's get back to the song and like what eric said let's let's really be intentional so as a way of being intentional i mean eric is my my uh my chief advisor so we we securing some other things to really be intentional with this because we have to get it done now the question was will you accept the person Yes or no? I accept the person. I don't accept the attitude. God bless you. Thank you so much, Joe. I am so unfortunate you know, that. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, it's so unfortunate that we cannot, no it, we cannot get to Pastor Howard. He's hearing us, but his microphone, I don't know, maybe his phone. He need to check it out. Uh, Leva, what would be your parting comment for tonight? Okay, we just want to uh, be grateful for the opportunity we have had to listen to all of these words of wisdom. Uh, for those that are watching or following us, uh, we're going to be coming back to you live again this come uh, Sunday with the same Open Mac Forum. So what you can do for us is to just uh, like the page, you know, Family Connection International, just like the page. 
And every time our events, you know, are playing, you're going to see it live. You're going to register on your on your phone. You're going to get the alarm. Just like the page and follow the page. We're going to be grateful. And to those two that share, we want to say thank you for all of your comments. We want to say thank you. Uh, we want to bless God for, for, for everything. And we look forward to having another beautiful time, guys, within this come Sunday with our guests and with our audience out there. Thank you very much. I want to say those who are on this panel tonight, if you have any recommendation, any suggestion as to how we can improve this program, we are open to your suggestion and recommendation. This is, we're not journalists. We want to come here to discuss family issues. These are very sticky issues that, that come out on our dinner table to talk about. That's why we, we are going to the hard code of some of the matters tonight. Since it's a bigger forum, it's an open mic. Uh, ben, your, your parting comment and your summary. I know you've been in and out. I know you got some engagement. We understand. Yes, and I've been doing some uh, technical work, you know, at the background while all of this is going on because of what we can handle initially. So that's uh, consider that I've been following a lot, but at the same time taking care of some technical stuff. All right, so um, let me say thanks and appreciation to all of you guys that made it possible uh, at this time to connect with us on this forum to discuss as a family forum. As you know, it's a family connection international and there's no limitation wherever you are from, whoever you are, we welcome you to be on this forum and uh, have some family discussion. So thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to be on this forum with us tonight and you are able to share with us some of your experiences. We look forward to seeing you again in the future that will be on Sunday, this coming Sunday. We'll be having an open mic forum as well. And uh, we look forward to seeing you and other people that are also following us or hearing us in the radio land and also connect with us. Or let us know if you have something special that you want to share on this forum. We can uh, create that avenue for you to share your experiences on this forum for other people to benefit as well. So thanks to all the participants. And uh, just to come back to that yes or no question, as it was rightly stated by our brother Joe Kebby, Hey, your child will always be your child. There's no matter, no matter what you do, that person is always your child. But the behavior is the one that requires conversation. So, again, there must be a conversation on the behavior, but the child will always be your child. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so unfortunate Jack Fassa is just joining us. The program is almost over. Maybe we just... Give it a minute, say hi to the audience. We almost got Mazi. Maybe say a word to them. The guy is looking like Ben Laden. He got a lot of beer and what have you. Go ahead, Jai. Say something to the crew. We're almost wrapping up. We can hear you, Jai. Oh, there's a problem with your microphone. Hey, day, the mic it should be on headpiece. Ah, uh, Jack. Oh, uh, Jack. I think we, yeah, Jack. So we had a sum up. I know we can do this on Sunday. Sunday, you last visit. I know you're not working. You can come back Sunday and let us have a discussion. Um, we'll be here Sunday, six o'clock again. We want to say thank you to everybody, all our viewers around the world. And we'll be back here another day. Have a good night from where you're watching. Have a good evening and have a good morning. Thank you so much and bye.